In this video by Deckplate we will be discussing esophageal conditions, some of the most common esophageal conditions experienced by military personnel. Disclaimer. This video is for educational purpose only. It's not intended for doctor-patient or lawyer-client relationship. Esophageal conditions impacting veterans during military service. Esophageal disorders are a collection of conditions that affect how the esophagus works. Your esophagus, or the food pipe, is the part of the digestive system that helps food travel from your mouth to your stomach. Esophageal conditions can occur due to service-related activities or as a complication of other service-linked disabilities, making you eligible for VA disability benefits. Gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastroesophageal reflux disease occurs when stomach acid repeatedly flows back into the tube connecting your mouth and stomach, esophagus. This backwash, acid reflux, can irritate the lining of your esophagus. Many veterans experience acid reflux from time to time. However, when acid reflux happens repeatedly over time, it can cause gastroesophageal reflux disease. Causes of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Gastroesophageal reflux disease is caused by frequent acid reflux or reflux of non-acidic content from the stomach. When you swallow, a circular band of muscle around the bottom of your esophagus, lower esophageal sphincter, relaxes to allow food and liquid to flow into your stomach. Then the sphincter closes again. If the sphincter does not relax as it should or it weakens, stomach acid can flow back into your esophagus. This constant backwash of acid irritates the lining of your esophagus, often causing it to become inflamed. Long-term effects of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Over time, chronic inflammation in your esophagus can cause Inflammation of the tissue in the esophagus, esophagitis. Stomach acid can break down tissue in the esophagus, causing inflammation, bleeding, and sometimes an open sore, ulcer. Esophagitis can cause pain and make swallowing difficult. Narrowing of the esophagus, esophageal stricture. Damage to the lower. Esophagus from stomach acid causes scar tissue to form. The scar tissue narrows the food pathway, leading to problems with swallowing. Precancerous changes to the esophagus, Barrett esophagus. Damage from acid. Can cause changes in the tissue lining the lower esophagus. These changes are associated with an increased risk of esophageal cancer. Diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease. Your healthcare provider might be able to diagnose gastroesophageal reflux disease based on a history of your signs and symptoms and a physical examination. To confirm a diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease or to check for complications, your doctor might recommend upper endoscopy, your doctor inserts a thin, flexible tube equipped with a light and camera, endoscope, down your throat. The endoscope helps your provider see inside your esophagus and stomach. Test results may not show problems when reflux is present, but an endoscopy may detect inflammation of the esophagus, esophagitis, or other complications. An endoscopy can also be used to collect a sample of tissue, biopsy, to be tested for complications such as Barrett esophagus. In some instances, if a narrowing is seen in the esophagus, it can be stretched or dilated during this procedure. This is done to improve trouble swallowing, dysphagia. Ambulatory acid, pH, probe test, a monitor is placed in your esophagus to identify when, and for how long, stomach acid regurgitates there. The monitor connects to a small computer that you wear around your waist or with a strap over your shoulder. The monitor might be a thin, flexible tube, catheter, that's threaded through your nose into your esophagus. Or it might be a clip that's placed in your esophagus during an endoscopy. The clip passes into your stool after about two days. X-ray of the upper digestive system, X-rays are taken after you drink a chalky. Liquid that coats and fills the inside lining of your digestive tract. The coating allows your doctor to see a silhouette of your esophagus and stomach. This is particularly useful for people who are having trouble swallowing. You may also be asked to swallow a barium pill that can help diagnose a narrowing of the esophagus that may interfere with swallowing. Esophageal manometry. This test measures the rhythmic muscle contractions in your esophagus when you swallow. Esophageal manometry also measures the coordination and force exerted by the muscles of your esophagus. This is typically done in people who have trouble swallowing. Transnasal esophagoscopy. This test is done to look for any damage in your esophagus. A thin, flexible tube with a video camera is put through your nose and moved down your throat into the esophagus. The camera sends pictures to a video screen. Hiatal hernia. A hiatal hernia occurs when the top of your stomach pushes up through an opening in your diaphragm into your chest. Your diaphragm is the muscle barrier that separates your abdominal cavity from your chest cavity. 
A hernia is when any organ or tissue pushes through a weakness in the tissue barrier that normally contains it. Hernias are common, and hiatal hernias are among the most common types. Causes of hiatal hernia A hiatal hernia occurs when weakened muscle tissue allows your stomach to bulge up through your diaphragm. It's not always clear why this happens, but a hiatal hernia might be caused by age-related changes in your diaphragm. Injury to the area, for example, after trauma or certain types of surgery. Being born with an unusually large hiatus. Persistent and intense pressure on the surrounding muscles such as while coughing, vomiting, straining during a bowel movement, exercising or lifting heavy objects. Long-term effects of hiatal hernia. The most common problem that hiatal hernias cause is chronic acid reflux. Chronic acid reflux can do damage to your esophagus over time if it's severe and medications don't manage it well enough. Complications of chronic acid reflux can include esophagitis, acid in your esophagus causes inflammation of your esophagus lining. Chronic inflammation can cause pain, swallowing problems, ulcers, and even bleeding. Esophageal stricture, chronic inflammation can cause scarring of your esophagus tissues. Scar tissue can interfere with your swallowing muscles and cause your esophagus to narrow. Barrett's esophagus, chronic inflammation can also eventually lead to tissue changes called Barrett's esophagus. This condition isn't harmful by itself, but it's considered precancerous. More rarely, a hiatal hernia may cause complications if it gets stuck or compressed in the hiatus. This usually only happens with the less common types of hiatal hernias. Complications could include gastrointestinal obstruction, your stomach or another organ could get stuck and compressed or twisted in the hiatus, creating a blockage in your gastrointestinal tract. Gastritis, trapped acid in the herniated part of your stomach could cause inflammation, stomach ulcers, and bleeding inside. Ischemia, your hernia could become so tightly compressed that it cuts off its own blood supply. This leads to inflammation and pain in the organ and, eventually, tissue death. Diagnosis of hiatal hernia. A hiatal hernia is often discovered during a test or procedure to determine the cause of heartburn or chest or upper abdominal pain. These tests or procedures include X-ray of your upper digestive system, X-rays are taken after you drink a chalky liquid that coats and fills the inside lining of your digestive tract. The coating allows your doctor to see a silhouette of your esophagus, stomach and upper intestine. Upper endoscopy, your doctor inserts a thin, flexible tube equipped with a light and camera, endoscope, down your throat to examine the inside of your esophagus and stomach and check for inflammation. Esophageal manometry, this test measures the rhythmic muscle contractions in your esophagus when you swallow. Esophageal manometry also measures the coordination and force exerted by the muscles of your esophagus. Esophagus stricture An esophageal stricture is an abnormal tightening or narrowing of the esophagus. Your esophagus is a muscular tube that connects the throat to the stomach, carrying food and liquid. A stricture narrows the esophagus, making it more difficult for food to travel down the tube. In severe cases, even drinking liquid can be difficult. Esophageal strictures can be Cancerous, these strictures get worse quickly. Benign, not cancerous benign strictures tend to progress slowly. Causes of esophageal stricture. Conditions or treatments that cause inflammation or scarring in the esophagus can lead to strictures. Eosinophilic esophagitis, this allergic reaction slash immune system problem causes inflammation in the esophagus, possibly leading to strictures. Esophageal cancer, when abnormal cells divide or grow out of control in esophageal tissue, the tumor can cause strictures. Gastroesophageal reflux disease, with gastroesophageal reflux disease, stomach acid can flow backward. The acid damages the lining of your esophagus. This type of stricture is called a peptic stricture. Radiation therapy, treatment for cancer in the head, neck or chest can cause strictures up to a year and a half later. Surgery, a procedure in the esophagus can leave inflammation and scarring, causing a stricture. Other causes, ulcers, some medications, for example, some antibiotics and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, certain infections and accidentally swallowing chemicals can also cause strictures. Long-term effects of esophageal stricture. Dense and solid foods can lodge in the esophagus when it narrows. This may cause choking or difficulty breathing. Problem swallowing can prevent you from getting enough food and liquid. This may lead to dehydration and malnutrition. There's also a risk of getting pulmonary aspiration, which occurs when vomit, food, or fluids enter your lungs. This could result in aspiration pneumonia, an infection caused by bacteria growing around the food, vomit, or fluids in the lung.
It's also possible for a hole to develop in your esophagus esophageal perforation. This complication can be life-threatening if left untreated. Diagnosis of esophageal stricture. Your healthcare provider asks you about your symptoms and medical history and performs a physical exam. Other tests can confirm a diagnosis. These tests can help confirm an esophageal stricture. X-ray with barium, you swallow a solution containing barium. Then your provider takes X-rays of your neck and chest. As the barium travels down the esophagus, it highlights any problems so your provider can see them on the X-ray. Ultrasound, detailed images can measure how thick the esophageal wall has become, which shows how much it is narrowing the esophagus. Endoscopy, a healthcare provider inserts an endoscope into your mouth and down your throat. The tool is a thin and flexible tube with a light and camera at the end. The healthcare provider can examine your esophagus. If needed, your provider can take a small piece of tissue to be tested for cancer, biopsy. Esophageal manometry, this test examines the esophageal muscles and sphincter. A small catheter tube is inserted into the nose and into the esophagus. This catheter measures the muscle and valve function of the esophagus during the swallow. Esophagus spasm, esophageal spasms are painful contractions within the muscular tube connecting your mouth and stomach. This tube is called the esophagus. Esophageal spasms can feel like sudden, severe chest pain that lasts from a few minutes to hours. Causes of esophagus spasm. It's not clear what causes esophageal spasms. However, they appear to be related to atypical functioning of nerves that control the muscles you use when you swallow. A healthy esophagus usually moves food into your stomach through a series of coordinated muscle contractions. Esophageal spasms make it difficult for the muscles in the walls of your lower esophagus to coordinate in order to move food to your stomach. There are two types of esophageal spasms, distal esophageal spasm and hypercontractile esophagus, also referred to as jackhammer esophagus. Long-term effects of esophagus spasm. If your esophageal spasms remain untreated, many people continue experiencing difficulty swallowing, chest pain and heartburn in addition to other symptoms of esophageal spasms. Diagnosis of esophagus spasm. Your healthcare provider might recommend. Esophageal manometry. This test measures the rhythmic muscle contractions. In your esophagus when you swallow, the coordination and force exerted by the esophagus muscles and how well your lower esophageal sphincter relaxes or opens during a swallow. X-rays of your upper digestive system, also called an esophagram. X-rays are taken after you drink a chalky liquid that coats and fills the inside lining of your digestive tract. The coating allows your provider to see a silhouette of your esophagus, stomach and upper intestine. Upper endoscopy, your provider inserts a thin, flexible tube equipped with eye. Light and camera down your throat to examine the inside of your esophagus and stomach. This instrument is called an endoscope. Endoscopy also can be used to collect a sample of tissue to be tested for other esophageal diseases. This tissue sample is known as a biopsy. If you were discharged veteran from U.S. military and looking for the compensation you can get for the esophageal conditions, please check out our other video on esophageal conditions with compensation rating. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe and like our videos.